Hello! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today I am going to be taking you through my journey of reading all three of Ian Reed's novels for the very first time. And, and when I say today, I do mean uh, like three months ago. I filmed all of this back in February, but due to a couple hiccups, not being able to edit my videos, just like sitting on the footage. I haven't been able to get it out yet, but I wanted to put this video out there because I have found that Ian Reid is just a really unique author that kind of like really does something special for me. Um, and I, yeah, I wanted to make sure that I got this out there because maybe He's one of my new favorite authors. I don't know if I would, I don't know. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I really enjoyed my time with Ian Reed. And in fact, I didn't even have an introduction for this video because I had actually started reading um, the first book that I read um, for just a completely different vlog, just like completely different reading vlog. And then as soon as I started reading it, as soon as I picked it up, I was like, I have to read everything that this man has written. Um, and that is what inspired me to do this Ian Readathon. Um, and I ended up reading all three of the books in a very short amount of time, like seriously, like two days, two, three days, um, because they are so quick. They are just page turners. You do not want to stop reading. They are like just, they just like get in your brain, in your heart, in your mind. Like it, they just, yeah, they just grab hold and do not let go. And I just had such a fun time experiencing that. And I want to get it out there. I mean, Ian Reid is a very popular novelist. Um, but on the off chance that you don't know who he is, he is a contemporary author who writes mainly psychological horror and thriller novels. Um, they tend to be very um, kind of weird and, and existential in nature. Um, and I won't lie, just a little bit terrifying, but in the best way. Uh, prior to this, I had not really like experienced, you know, or knew what kind of horror I really enjoyed. And after this, I can say very thoroughly that Ian Reed is my brand of horror. So without further ado, here is me experiencing and reading all three of Ian Reed's novels for the very first time. Hello, um, it is late on Monday evening. Um, the long weekend is over and long it was indeed for me. I was very, very busy, but at the same time, I was like very busy in the morning, like working really intensely in the mornings from like 7 a.m. Um, and then in the afternoons, I got to have really cozy afternoons and evenings, drinking tea, like sitting on my couch, reading after being on my feet for like several hours in the morning. And yeah, I started We Spread by Ian Reed, and um, I'm already halfway through it. Um, like I said, I knew this was gonna move fast, both because of the the page or the line breaks, but also because like you just don't want to put it down you just like keep you want to keep reading like this is a finish it in one sitting kind of book which is like definitely what i needed what i wanted um but i am gonna choose to stop it because i'm not gonna lie it's late at night and i'm not sure how this is gonna end and um you know i, I don't want to be sad or scared <laughs> when I go to bed tonight um so yeah I'm gonna just stop myself there but I did want to like I wanted to keep reading because there's like no good stopping point in this book because you just are like so curious all the time along with the like just eeriness of the plot there's just this kind of like like overarching like existential dread 
<laughs> um, because um, this character is just like pondering what it's like to be at the end of her life and it's just it it's just adding to this um this sense of of fear and as it says on the back of the book this just like dread which i think is a good word to describe this but it's i mean it's it's so interesting it's so interesting it's very compelling very like you just want to know what's going to happen next and the character is sympathetic and the writing is really strong because there's not like there's not a lot of scary moments it's just like the compounding suspense um so i think ian reed is really clever in that regard um and i just it's like i, I kind of think i know where it's going but i'm i i just don't know what the end game is or like why uh so i i don't know maybe i'm completely off base or like i just i i mean i'm just so curious i'm so interested so i'm gonna stop for now we're gonna play scrabble which will be really fun um i'm gonna just put on some like light tv um just enjoy the rest of my evening and then get ready for a productive day tomorrow and i will finish we spread but i did want to update you at halfway i'm really enjoying this this is exactly what I wanted this book to be. And because this vlog ended up being a little bit of a mess because it wasn't planned out very well, I didn't even end up recording the end of my thoughts on We Spread either, nor did I even tell you what it's about. Um, so I promise the rest of this vlog is gonna be better managed, but this one, I was really caught off guard by it. Um, in fact, when I picked it up, it was, completely an impulse decision to do that <laughs> um and i picked it up like because look at this gorgeous cover very very beautiful i i, I like got like the full-on hardcover this did not come out that long ago this came out i think at the end of 2022 um and it is ian reed's most recent book we spread okay this one i Remember reading, you know, when I read it for the first time, I remember just being so taken aback by how, how just like kind of like dread inducing it is. Ian Reed is really good at figuring out the things that people tend to fear the most and just capitalizing on that fear, taking it to extremes. So We Spread follows um, an older woman, I, what is her name? Her name is Penny. Her name is Penny. Um, we follow Penny, who is um, quite old. We never get an actual age for her, I don't think, but it is suggested that she is quite um, elderly. And after an incident in her apartment, she is told that she needs to be taken to um, kind of an end of life care facility. And she tries to fight it at first. She tries to say like, no, I'm like completely capable of being on my own. Like I can, I, I can handle myself. But eventually she is pushed to the point that she does stay in this home. And it's a really vulnerable place to be, honestly. I can't even, you know, imagine what it must be like, although I know it happens all the time, that it's it's time for people to admit that they need help um, in their older years and they need um, people that can help them. And thankfully those people do exist. But anyway, she's taken to this home and quickly things are not what they seem. Um, there seems to be something a little sinister about this place. It's a very small home with only her and, and three other patients and a couple caregivers. And really, I don't want to say too much more than that because this book is such a short book. It's such a short read. I mean, if you look at like the pages, like there's like hardly any text on them. So honestly, I feel like even giving away much more of the plot is like not necessary because really, the more that you go into this with just, you know, just 
taking a stab at it, opening it, starting to read, I think that's like the better way to go, which is true of pretty much all of Ian Rain's novels. Um, but yeah, that's, that is the setup. A woman is taken to um, a care facility and things may not be what they seem. Um, what did I end up reading this? I rated this four stars. I really enjoyed it. Um, it did move quick and I, you know, I'm not one to usually say this, but what was holding it back from a five for me is that I felt that it could have been a longer or just included a couple extra details. It's quite ambiguous the whole time. So, you know, if you're not someone that's really, you know, okay with a lot of ambiguity, that might be a struggle for you. And I don't mind ambiguity, but I think that the level of ambiguous in this book is just a bit too much. Um, but what I will say is that like, despite that, the feelings and emotions are so pronounced and just so real. Like you feel this in your bones when you read this book. You feel like very genuine emotion for the characters and you are put in this headspace of just like forcing to reconcile with some really difficult truths. And I think for that, it's just really masterfully done. It's terrifying, but also so artful. This is like, Ian Reid is so good at making like pieces of art out of the horror genre, which, you know, is not typically a genre that we would think of as super um, artistic. Although as we're kind of developing as, you know, a society and there is such thing as like elevated horror, this is like very much in that vein. Like, do I think that this could be like an A24 film? Absolutely. Um, it's emotional, it's heavy, it's terrifying, and it will leave you thinking for the rest of your life. Hello, I am back. It's time to start book two of this video. Today is actually my birthday. I'm 26 years old. I can't even believe that. Um, <laughs> um, I look a little like, like just windswept and that's because I went on a walk. Um, I actually walked to the bookstore. There's my little birthday book haul. I had to treat myself. I mean, come on, it's my birthday. I need more books. I don't need more books. Look at, look at all the ones that I haven't read. Hi, Azula. <laughs> um, okay, back to what you're here for. Um, next book, I am starting something that I just get to sit down and savor and enjoy on my birthday. That is Faux by Ian Reid. I don't know what this is about. I think it's like the, these people living in this farmhouse um, and they don't get visitors and then one day they do get a visitor. And you know, as it is with Ian Reid books, the less you know, the better. So I am just gonna start this and see what happens. Okay, I read the first chapter of Faux and I'm hesitant because, well, I'm hesitant to talk about it because I don't want to give any spoilers or anything like that, but um, I'm one chapter in and I have some thoughts, predictions. So um, if you don't want that, then just skip this section, um, but so faux is actually i did mention that it's about you know they live in a house and then they get a visitor which is very unusual for them and that is true but what i didn't know because i didn't read the book jacket was that this is kind of has like a sci-fi element to it it's set in the near future and the visitor is some like government tech guy who comes and says that he is giving the couple or the the man um an opportunity to become a part of like the first space colony like he's been chosen like he's won a lottery for it or something um, and the man did not enter into this lottery he doesn't know what this is um, and he's also upset because his wife is not being offered the same thing so theoretically they would be split up if if he went um, so odd odd premise um, and then I did read the book jacket 
And it says, um, um, arrangements have already been made so that when he leaves, Henrietta won't have a chance to miss him because she won't be left alone, not even for a moment. Henrietta will have company, familiar company. So that kind of sounds to me like this is going to be like that episode of Black Mirror, um, which actually is like one of my favorite episodes of Black Mirror. Um, the one where uh, the husband dies and then he like, he's like a robot. They give like a robot version of him. So I think it's going to be like that where there is a robot version I say robot I don't know if it's an actual robot but you know what I mean a robot version of the husband um and then she's gonna have to decide you know who's real who's the robot you know that whole shtick um though I do imagine there's gonna be some twist to it because that's a very familiar sci-fi setup pretty common sci-fi trope um so part of my thinking is like, even in the first chapter, the wife was acting quite bizarre. So I'm thinking that she's definitely in on it. Like she was the one who volunteered their names for whatever reason. And then I think also my other prediction is that this, the beginning of the story is already in the test. So I'm thinking that, that the man that we're hearing from, our, our perspective, our narrator, is actually the fake man. And this is like a test of his consciousness and his like reality. Um, because the wife was definitely acting weird. So somehow she's involved with this whole process. Another thing, like one thing that's very frustrating is that in the entire time... He didn't just ask, like, oh, like, I didn't volunteer for this. Why wouldn't you send someone who did volunteer for this? There's so many people who would willingly go to space. Why are you trying to send me? And he just doesn't really ask that, which is very frustrating as a reader. Because, like, I want the questions that I would ask to be asked by the characters. But the wife has been acting odd. And it's only the first chapter. So my thinking is that she has something to do with this. Um, honestly, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong about all of this stuff. I hope it is completely different because that wouldn't be very fun if I just guessed it from the first chapter. But we will see. Those are my predictions. Did not realize this has a sci-fi twist. So we shall see what actually happens. All right. I have just finished Foe by Ian Reid, my second Ian Reid. And this is his second novel. I'm actually reading his novels in reverse order. Didn't mean to do that, but that's just how it happened. Um, this was a miss for me, unfortunately. Um, I had quite a few problems with this book. Um, the pacing is really slow, especially compared to We Spread. Now, that being said, I did read this, like, very quickly. I read it in just about a day. It does read quick, but, like, the pacing is very slow, especially compared to We Spread. And the tension is, like, virtually non-existent, again, compared to We Spread, which I just had this, like, really tense feeling the entire time, and I was just, like, constantly, like, always like second guessing myself and my theories um and there's just no tension really in this book and it's also very predictable um it's a storyline that not only have I seen before but I've seen it done better in several other places um it, it did have an interesting piece of commentary at the end that I, I actually wasn't expecting and I thought that that was actually very well done. This book, like, w part of the um, commentary that it's it's working through in this story is about um, relationship dynamics and um, kind of what it means to be in a relationship for a prolonged period and how that, like, affects... Um, each person's kind of individuality 
Um, and I really liked the conclusion that it came to at the end. I was not expecting that and I was really pleasantly surprised with that. But um, yeah, it just, it wasn't tense. Um, this sounds like it would be like a really interesting premise, but the direction that it went was just not my favorite. And I, I don't know. I don't even, I don't think I have any more to say about it, honestly. Like it was kind of just very mid, very, I mean, honestly, I was bored. I was bored the entire time. Um, yeah, that's it. Not, this, this was not it. And I'm very, very sad about that because I was highly uh, anticipating this one. This is also going to be a movie I just saw recently that they're adapting this. I, I don't know. I don't know how it would do as a movie, uh, but I was bored for this book. So that was a mess. Hello. Good, I mean, afternoon. I was going to say good morning. It's not morning. My hair is in a ponytail, which is not great for on camera, but that's just, that's what's going on. We're just going to have to deal with it. Like, I do have hair in the back of my head. It just doesn't look like it from this angle, so sorry. Okay, um, I have started, um, I'm thinking of ending things. I am on page 25, so... Um, I, I like to update um, on Ian Reed books from like the first chapter, Suko. Um, because I kind of like to see what my like initial feelings are going in, and then or, how, or like what I think is going to happen, and then how it compares. So, um, unlike with Foe, where I you know, read the first chapter and I was like, okay, this is where I think it's going. And I kind of had like a path in my mind of like, this is what the story's going to be. Um, unlike Fo, I don't have a clue where this is going, but it's already deeply unsettling. <laughs> um, <laughs> so with Fo, I had like this idea of like, this is where I think the plot is going, but I wasn't really feeling a lot of tension. Um, and as I mentioned with my final thoughts on Faux, I, di I didn't really like it actually. It kind of made me sad. But 25 pages into, I'm thinking of ending things and I'm like, ooh, this, this is, I, I don't even know where I think this is going at all. It, it's tense already. Like already 20 pages in, I'm like, kind of freaked out so I love that and also I just I I don't know what could possibly happen and I didn't know anything about this book didn't see the film um I didn't know anything about this book other than I just very briefly read the book jacket and it doesn't tell you a whole lot either um this follows um a woman and her boyfriend and it says that they're going to visit his parents um Deeply suspenseful and irresistibly unnerving debut. Yeah, this is Ian Reed's first book, written in 2016. Um, it says they're on their way to a secluded farm when the two take an unexpected detour. She is left wondering if there's any escape at all. And that's really all that we know. Um, but we are in the perspective of this woman. And in the first 20 pages, it is established that she has some very serious issues that she's working through. Um, so we're with a, a protagonist that I wouldn't necessarily, I don't know if it's unreliable, I don't know if that's the word to say, but we know right from the get-go that she um, is dealing with some mental health problems. The book is called I'm Thinking of Ending Things, and the very first page the first line of the book is, she says, I'm thinking of ending things. She's having these really um, kind of just intrusive thoughts. And you can tell immediately that there are situations going on that are not, are not good, frankly. Um, okay, so all that being said, I don't know where this is 
this book is going. In 20 pages, we've already been introduced to like three, if not four, potential plot points. And, and, and I don't really see how those things could come together in any way. I just, I, I, I'm so happy about that. Like, I'm not trying to actively guess what is going to happen in this book. It's just like when I read Foe, it was just right there. I just, like, the theory of what I thought was going on, it seemed very obvious to me. In this, I have no idea where this is going, and I am so, so, so happy about it. Um, it kind of reminds me of how I felt when I started reading The Overnight Guest, which I read in my winter horror vlog. Like, similar to how I felt reading that, it was just like, I, I don't know how these things could be related and what is going on. I have no idea. And I'm so excited. This is what I was hoping for. And this is like his most popular novel. So I cannot wait to really sink my teeth into this. <sighs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, I have to take like a deep breath. Um whoo. Oh my gosh. Wow. Uh I've just finished. I'm thinking of ending things and I have so many thoughts, questions, like ah, ugh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Who um let let me start by saying that I think this is the scariest book that I've ever read. I was in genuine terror the entire time. And um, I'm sure that if any of you are familiar with Ian Reed or even have like slightly an idea of this story or have heard about it or the movie, people have probably said it's weird. It's like a total like, what the heck is going on the whole time? And Yes, that's extremely true. I am going to need to go like online and figure out what that ending was. Like, I don't know if I processed what happened. It is just, wow, there's, <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot going on in my mind right now. Um, <laughs> but yes, this book was genuinely terrifying. Like, it really grabs on to some of, I think, most people's very common fears. Um, and <laughs> this is what I'll say. I'm so glad that I did not read this while I was single because I would straight up never trust anybody ever again. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, it's wild. It's truly wild. <laughs> I'm not explaining this well and I think it's because there is no explanation for it there is genuinely no explanation for it and the thing is it it the the not knowing of what's going on it lasts for so long you really don't have a clue what is going on what's happening even until up until the very end and even then like I still have so many questions like th this Oh, yeah, I mean, I love on the book jacket, it says, you will be scared, but you won't know why. I <laughs> There's just, this, this book is just insane. It's insane. It's definitely the scariest book I've ever read, or it's the most scared I've ever felt while reading a book. Uh, but I, I, I loved it. <laughs> like, I think I have to give this five stars because it really achieved what it set out to do and I have been looking for a long time or at least for the past like year or so I've been looking for a book to genuinely scare me and while the overnight guest did scare me when I read it um, in the first half you kind of figure out what's going on about halfway through the book and then the le the you know second half is just like the resolution this is just like such a deeply ingrained like fear <laughs> that it puts in you and it does not let up it does not let up until like literally the last page <laughs> i can't believe this is a debut 
this is Ian Reed's debut. Literally, <laughs> if I would have read this in 2016 when it came out, I would have been like, "What? who is this author? What is wrong with him? Um, oh my God. I don't even, I can't, I, I can't even properly talk about this book. That is how so deeply disturbed this book is, but I did have a good time. I'm having quite an emotional reaction to it. And I don't think that I will ever forget this reading experience. Okay, so there we go. I just read all three of Ian Reed's novels. Um, I read them in reverse publication order, starting with We Spread, uh, which was published in 2022. And then I read Faux, published in 2018. And finally, I read I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which was published in 2016. So uh, my final ranking for them and my star ratings, um, uh, starting with the highest, um, the highest ranking that is I'm Thinking of Ending Things at five stars. And then we have We Spread at maybe a four, a four, I don't know, 3.5, four. I really did enjoy this one and I definitely felt unsettled for a large majority of it. And I think that what it did with the writing style was, was really unique. Though that being said, because I read this first, I don't know if I would have read this one first, I don't know, like I would have been as surprised because a similar like writing thing happens in this one as well. But for the purpose and the context of the plot and the character, We Spread does it better and it's really, really well done. Um, so this one, I think I really like the social commentary. All three of these books have a little bit of social commentary. I think I liked uh, We Spread's message a little bit more. It's a little bit stronger, a little bit clearer. Um, so yeah, I think I'll stick with my four star rating. I, I did really enjoy this one. And then Faux, so, unfortunately, I'm literally, I'm only giving this 2.5 stars. Faux so, did not work for me at all. Um, and I think it was just because it was predictable. Um, I'd kind of seen that story before and I don't think there was any tension in this at all. Uh, so quite an odd departure, especially after uh, I'm thinking of ending things, but um, yeah. So uh, what is my conclusion on how I feel about Ian Reed? Um, he is creative. He comes up with definitely some odd concepts. There's quite a lot of similarities between these three books. Um, and especially these two, I feel like there's, well, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of similarities. I can see a lot of similar themes being played with. I can see a lot of similar writing choices. Definitely there are marks of an Ian Reid book. And in the future, I would like to see how he kind of goes away from some of those typical things um, that he does in his books. Um, I think, you know, I'm not sure how Ian Reid fans reacted to Foe. Um, I think this one is quite an outlier compared to these two and We Spread almost feels like a kind of return to form after Faux. Faux does feel quite different and I do wonder if that's because, you know, he tried to write something very different from I'm Thinking of Ending Things and uh, the result didn't work for me at least and then, you know, we come back and We Spread and, and We Spread has a lot in common with I'm Thinking of Ending Things. Um, so. Uh, I don't know kind of like what his writing process is, if he's trying to do something different and kind of that was the result with Faux, but but even in Faux, there's quite a lot of similarities. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to have an author that has such a distinct style and kind of just like general, the concepts and, and the way that he structures his stories is pretty similar. And that doesn't necessarily take away from the experience. Um, if you've read an Ian Reid book, you kind of know what could be in other Ian Reid books, but still, the stories are distinct enough and the characters are distinct enough 
and um, the the events, the startling events are distinct enough that it still makes it worth the read. And also these books are just like, they're gonna be fast reads. I read all of these, we spread I read in almost a single sitting. Um, and all of these other ones I read within uh, 24 hours. So they are quick reads, they're fun. I have had just the best time um, embarking on this journey to learn about this author and I can't wait to see what he does next. Um, I think I'm gonna buy a copy of I'm Thinking About the Things for myself because <laughs> if anyone ever comes to my library and they're like, do you have something that's like super creepy and disturbing? I'm gonna be like, do I have the book for you? Uh, yeah, so there you go guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, this has been my Ian Readathon and I've had the best time. Let me know down in the comments below if you have read any Ian Read or if you're thinking of picking any of these up now. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye!